Okay, welcome to this math tutorial on how to model a hand. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to maximize my screen space uh, for your benefit. So to do that, I'm going to go to display and I'm going to hide some of the UI elements. Uh, I'm going to hide the time slider. I do not need it. Range slider, command line, help line, the toolbox. Uh, I'll leave open for the moment. Uh, the attribute editor, I'll leave open for a moment, etc, uh, etc. Et so on the right hand side it should be quite nice. Now I'm using May of 2012 for this example. Uh, this tutorial can be used on most previous versions of Maya. Okay, so to go ahead with this tutorial we just need a basic polygonal shape. Uh, and what I'll be using is a cube. So I'm just going to create a basic cube like so. This is going to form the basis of my hand. Uh, I'm basically going to be using my own hand as a reference so I encourage you to look at your own hand on a regular basis to figure out what's going on. So going over to the right hand side here to look at the inputs. Uh, I'm basically going to uh, open up and put in some more subdivisions into our cube here. So what I'm going to be looking at is subdivisions height, so two. Okay, actually no, I don't think I'll do two that one. So I think maybe two width. Yeah, that's more like it. And one full height. Okay, some of the shortcut keys I'm using now to operate the zoom feature. So when I hold down control four, two or one, uh, just ignore that when you're working with this uh, tutorial. So I'm going to use this as the basis of my wrist. So I'm going to go into sub object mode, uh, vertex mode, which will be F9 on the keyboard. Okay, and you can see that it's switched to that uh, mode, as in the status bar. And I will grab these series of vertices here and just scale them down. I'm just going for a rough uh, hand shape in this example. Uh, I could drag out these polygons here, the vertices, and sort of expand it to get a basic wrist shape and narrow it down. Now don't worry about this so much uh, as we progress this is, will start to look more like a hand. It's very good uh, to work with very basic shapes because they are very easy to understand. Okay so I'm in the polygon tab here. I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this up. So I'm back in the object mode with F8. I will select the cut tool and they call it the interactive split tool and I'm just going to start splitting and right click to finish that split and just like so okay and to finish the tool and these little areas here are going to form the basis of my fingers okay so it's looking quite nice. So I'm going to go ahead and do another split. And this is going to form the basis of my index finger. Now I'm going to start with the index finger because it's one of the biggest fingers on the hand. And it makes sense uh, to work with that first. So I'm just going to basically now manipulate the shape. Select. And I'm going to modify it so it's more of a cylindrical shape. And if you look at your own hand, your finger, basic shape of a finger is a cylinder. So this is pretty much the shape you want to work with. Now I'm not going to worry about the other three fingers because essentially once I've finished the first finger, I will copy and paste this uh, across the entire mesh. Okay. So now going into face mode <coughs> uh, with F11. I'm going to shift select two faces and I'm going to go ahead and extrude uh, these faces. Okay, so getting the extrude tool up here, I will then drag it out so far and that's going to become the first uh, bone and the finger going towards the joint interface between the next bone. So just move that a bit, doesn't really matter. I think as we 
uh, progress, we'll modify this a little bit more. And I'm going to repeat this extrude tool by hitting G on the keyboard. So this basically enables me to drag out another segment like so. Now I could just drag it straight out and continue with creating the finger, but what I'm going to do is just concentrate uh, on creating the actual joint itself. It's a good idea to have a few cuts or ring loops uh, around the finger here to give adequate um, mesh for deformation purposes later on. This is mostly for animation. Okay, just sort of move a little bit like so. Hit G again, drag it out. And again, just scale that in a little bit more. Okay. Not too bad. But I do need to scale it because the finger will taper slightly as we go further down the finger chain. So I'm going to go into vertex mode, which is F9 on the keyboard. I'm going to exit the extrude process by just hitting W, which will enter the move tool. And actually what I'll do is do scale, which is R, and just scale it slightly like that. So we're just trying to get the taper going on with the finger here. Okay, so we're going back into face mode with F11. We'll continue with the extrude process. So again, pull out the next joint, which will be not as long as the first one, but still quite long. And this time I will taper the finger some more so I don't get into the same situation as before, needing to skip the tool. And it looks quite nice. And repeating the extrude tool with the G key. I will then do exactly what I did with the previous joint and create some detail here. Now, to activate the scale tool or the rotate tool while inside the extrude tool, you would basically select uh, the gizmo that you wish to manipulate. So in this case I have the Slim, um, rotate gizmo selected. If I want to select the uh, transform gizmo, I select the one of the transforms, in this case uh, the Z axis. If I want to hit the scale, transform, I look for the cubes at the end of each one of these gizmos, which will then activate the entire scale gizmo, like so. So it's pretty straightforward. Okay, it looks nice, so I will then hit G one more time to continue with the extrude process. Now, oh wait, sorry. I haven't finished this knuckle or this joint before we continue. So I'm going to do that, G again, and then, okay, that's much nicer. A bit more, and it's pretty much getting to what we want. It looks a little bit fat, but we can sort of manipulate that as we go along. Okay, so we sort of got the beginnings of a finger here. I'm just going to scale that in a bit more to get a desired look. And then I'll hit W to exit the tool. So continuing on, I will go into vertex mode. And I'm just going to select these vertices here. And pull that up a bit like so. To get more of a rounded shape. Alright, so basically at this sort of stage you look around your model from various directions and perspectives to make sure it looks good from all angles. Uh, this is very important uh, to do this, um, to always check it all the time, otherwise you don't know what might happen. So now I'm going to cut in an extra ring of detail uh, and this will basically go along here and wrap around our model like so whoops and I will do that with the cut tool so I'm just going to go into object mode by F8 on the keyboard and I'm just going to cut some detail along the whole outside of here so you may have 2012 I don't use it very often but it's got this nice little helper type thing with the cut tool now, which is quite nice. Okay, obviously W takes me out, so I hit Y to repeat the tool. Basically what I should have done is just hit enter on the keyboard, which would have finalized this cut. So no drama. Let's just do it again. Hit enter. 
and we have a cut 